Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is all about winter and creating a moody winter misty landscape. The paper that I'm using is by Arches. It's cold press watercolor paper and it's in a block form which means that the paper is glued on the sides keeping the paper flat and this is really great if you're going to use a lot of water. To begin this landscape, I have a little bit of blue in my water, um, but I'm using the wet on wet technique, and that means that I'm wetting the surface before applying my paint. Now, because I have a little blue in my water, it's coming out slightly blue, but that is fine because my sky is going to be blue, and then the water, of course, is going to be blue. And I'm just going in a back and forth uh, motion here and really that's just because that's just how I did it <laughs> so um, there are many ways to achieve clouds and to get a fun texture in the sky this is just one way and I am ever so lightly dropping in some paint and then you'll see me take the brush and put it on the flat side and then I drag it and then I drag it using the other side. So really, I'm just playing around. I highly recommend that you explore and see what suits your style best as well. And I'm really after a very soft and wispy style of cloud, which is why I'm using the thinner side of the brush when I put the paint down and then taking the flat side and swooping it across to drag that paint out. And I'm also leaving in a little bit of the white space to create, obviously, the, the clouds versus the blue, which is the sky. And then I drag some water all the way down the paper, and then I will eventually work wet on wet in there to create the water. But you can see, using the side of my brush to drag that paint out, And it's quite blue here, but of course watercolor does dry quite light. And this is where I'm dragging it out. And I am trying to be mindful of having a very soft hand or a light touch to dragging the paint because I don't want to overwork the paint and I really do want a soft effect. You can get a very soft um, sky and water, for that matter, effect if you were to have a very wet surface and to tilt your paper and to let the paint naturally flow. That is a wonderful way to create very soft and smooth blends. But I hope you're all having a wonderful start to the new year. Happy 2024. And of course, happy winter if you are having winter wherever you are. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's been a while since I've posted, so happy to be back. All right, so for here, the next step is I am adding different values of the cobalt blue with the majority of Payne's gray. And I am just dragging it along. Now this water is going to be in the background, so I'm not really too worried or concerned about how it looks. I'm using a size 12 round brush here. It's a long round and it's by Princeton and it's the Aqua Elite series. I really enjoy this brush. I'm a huge fan of long rounds. If you've been here for a while, then you know that. But if you're new, then I always use long rounds. And I have my brush damp at this point and I am removing some of the paint and that is what is referred to as lifting. So if you have a damp clean brush, you can go over the paint while it's still wet 
and you can lift some of that paint off. It's a really fun way to create uh, drama in your painting and you can create mist effects with that. You can create clouds by using that technique. I mean, really the possibilities are endless. I love doing that, so I do that quite often. And then as I get towards the center of the paper, I try to soften it out even more because between that darker blue and that lighter blue, I create mist. Now using a gravy brush and I can't remember the size of this. It really doesn't matter. I will have the uh, materials listed in the description below, so don't fret. But this is the Gravy series, and I'm creating my mountains. And for the color of my mountains, I am using Payne's Gray. Now you can change the hue of your Payne's Gray if you want it to be a bit more gray and a bit more warm by adding in a brown. That's a lovely shade, but I was going for a very blue-toned, blue feel um, for this landscape. And then taking my damp um, long round, I am blending it out. I want very soft edges because I'm really trying to emphasize that there's mist at the bottom of the mountain that meets the edge of the water in the very far distance. And you'll see that I'll change the values of the of the Payne's Gray, and you can change the value quite easily by just having darker um, paint. And how you get darker paint, if you're new to watercolor, is you just use less water. So you'd want to just dip your brush into your paint, and you will get quite a dark and saturated uh, value of whatever color that you're using. And of course, if you want a lighter value, then you use a bit more water and less pigment. So you can already see by softening the edges, it looks like there's, there's mist there. And it's so easy and it's such a fun way to achieve a very fun misty effect. There are many ways, of course. This is just one way. And these mountains, they are, you know, they're, they're fun. I do think that they're relatively easy. Um, I'm not really going for anything realistic. Um, you know, it is a style preference. And maybe I will share a more realistic mountain tutorial in the future. All right, so now the paper is totally dry and you can see that there is some mist forming and some water. Now I have taken some deep sap green and mixed in some Payne's Gray. So my green is very, very cool at this point and I am sweeping it up on dry paper. So I'm working wet on dry now and I'm sweeping using the side of my brush to create the base of my trees. Now these trees are very messy, very sloppy, and I'm okay with that. If you want to change the green to be a bit more warm and less cool, then you can add in some red. It's going to make it a bit more grayer, but it will warm it up. And if you want it to have a different hue, you can always try adding purple, and purple will keep it cool. So just some fun ways to play with your greens. Highly recommend it. And you can see as I continue to sweep it up, I am um, just naturally lifting some of that paint. But I think that works in my favor because it's creating different texture at the base of the paper. So it's going to add in some dimension, um, emphasizing either you know, different, just different textures in the foreground. 
And now I am back to my gravy brush. Usually the brush that I use for trees is a long round by Velvet Touch, but um, I figured why not use the gravy ones? Because I do love the gravy brushes and I think you can get just as beautiful of trees with them as well. And of course they are cheaper than the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes because you do get a set of 12. If you want more details on how I achieve these trees, um, then I will link a video in the upper right hand corner. So be sure to click that if you're new here and you want to know how I achieve these trees. I also lifted some trunks. So taking that flat brush, I dipped it in water and dabbed it off on a paper towel and I was able to lift that paint out because it was wet. Now keep in mind these trees are very messy and um, very uh, a bit thicker and looser and just not as many details and I'm not worried about it because I will be going over it with uh, white gouache. So there we go. And you can add as many or as little trees as you want. And I did step away from this painting and then came back a few days later. So you'll notice everything as far as lighting has changed, <laughs> even my nail polish. Um, but now I'm using the PH Martins Bleed Proof White and it's a very opaque um, uh, watercolor. Um, I really like it. It's my preferred. You can use other mediums. You can use acrylic. You can use uh, gouache. Really, it's up to you. And I'm taking that gravy brush and I am swooping some of that paint um, back and forth to emphasize snow on the trees. I would recommend wish which I wish I would have done here <laughs> is to dilute some of that pigment so it wasn't so bright. You can dilute it with some water or you can even add a little bit of a color um, to have it be a bit more gray and it just gives a really beautiful effect when you do that versus having it be so white and so bright. But you know, it's fine. Um, it's, uh, it's what I did. <laughs> so, but you, but experiment with both, I suppose, is what I'm trying to suggest. And I do this for all of the trees. Um, and I bring it down as far as I want. And I do, of course, add some splattering. And I will cut this um, these clips so you're not here all day long <laughs> um, but I do want to slow it down here to emphasize what I'm doing and I'm using the side of my brush now to add um, a broken snow effect to emphasize smaller trees in the distance so that's a fun little sneaky trick as well Here's a closer view of what I'm doing. I am drawing in the trunks now. And then of course I go back into the branches. Now I was a bit lazy and I personally like uh, this way of applying snow. It doesn't bother me. Um, I am swooping it in my branch motion um, as far as from left to right, but you can make little globs because if you do look at trees and you look at the snow on the trees, they are in these um, very fun abstract type of shapes on the branches where they collect. Um, so really it's up to you and what you want to do.
So the trees right there, they're a bit softer than the ones on the left, and that's what I mean by having a bit more of that diluted, washed out white. It just looks a bit more enchanting to me, and I really love that kind of gray white. But you know, um, I did a majority of very bright white, and at this point, it's more of just kind of committing and finishing the painting. There are many things with this painting that I would change, but again, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> so um, I decided to splatter on a bunch of snowflakes or falling snow, really whatever. I did it over the mountains and then of course over the trees. And then I ended up tapping in some snow and had way too large of drops. So when I tried to smooth it out, it just, well, you can see. <laughs> but again, um, I think even when you have mistakes, you just have to kind of commit to finishing it and um, remind yourself in the next painting that, okay, I don't want to do that again. So, but I'm sharing it anyway because, you know, um, sometimes I don't have uh, as great of paintings um, as others. It's just how it goes. Now, I don't hate this painting. I actually quite like it, um, but there are some things that I would do differently. So, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you like and subscribe and stay tuned for more landscapes in the future and let me know um, what you think. And um, yes, I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful painting experience. And take care, my friends. I wish you well.